morning from MWC 2025. I'm here together with Andre Suyankov, CEO at Porter One. Hello, Andre. Nice to meet you. Hello, Akim. Hello, everybody. MWC, what are you showcasing this year here in Barcelona? Well, as usual, we would be showcasing our products for telecoms, but this year we have something new. Everybody is talking about AI, and we see more and more company developing AI agents. And that's great. And I walked around uh, four years from now and other stands, plenty of companies doing cool things, but nobody seems to be thinking about the next step. Once yeah. they get the product ready, how they're going to monetize it? How are they going to ensure a profitability? And that's what we're trying to help them with, with our new product called Porta Aim. So how do you see the AI, AI market from a real business model perspective? We know there are a lot of AI agents as such, where you can, let's say, fulfill easy tasks, or let's say you get mm -hmm. easily information, let's say, uh, bundled and uh, uh, you get a proper output. Mm -hmm. But how can I really use AI to take action? Is that already a model what is in place? Or what do you think is the real life scenario? We seem to be very close to it. Because before the chat GPT and other things, they were great on providing some answers to the questions which you put to yeah. them. But then you were responsible to apply those things into real life. Now, we have an opportunity to have agents which will be doing actions on our behalf. Earlier, 2024, Anthropic released the Model Context Protocol. It's an open source protocol which would allow agents to have access to real life systems, your data in your accounting system, on your telecom system or somewhere else, in a controlled fashion. Because obviously we don't want some AI to have access to all the data and do whatever yeah. it wants with it. And so far, the protocol is there. We, at Part one we did a proof of concept which will allow a agent to access customer data. So now a virtual support agent by AI, it will not just give general recommendations about, well, if it doesn't work, reboot a computer. It can retrieve that customer's balance or account information, can provide specific feedback. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we want more people to adopt that approach. We want more companies to open access to their proprietary application via MCP and we hope to see more agents who are utilizing that. Mm -hmm. So you offer flexibility with your platform, so you're not sticking to one specific, let's say, provider, so you open up the data operators probably, uh, let's say, create through your platform. Yes, that was our approach from the very beginning. We're trying to be agnostic about the different protocols and APIs and the systems to be integrated uh, yeah. with. We open our API and then people, they can choose whichever agent or AI system will yeah. provide more value for them. Uh -huh. So would you say that it still will take a significant amount of time until we're really able to integrate AI in a way that it takes action and uh, brings valuable results? Mm -hmm. I'm trying not to give specific predictions because if I make a prediction based on my current knowledge and the current tools available, yeah. in one or two months, the AI tools, they will change, they will improve so significantly that the okay. predictions probably going to be no longer there. Okay. But I think we're getting very close. Uh -huh. And uh, I see a lot of people right now focusing on uh, creating the, uh, basically putting a prompt on top of uh, existing AI yeah. agent. It's not what's going to be the game changer. Yeah. They should really think about these agents which will incorporate logic, uh -huh. they will use AI as a tool to process and do things which otherwise would not be possible with the yeah. code, yeah. but it has to deliver more value and mm -hmm. has to be vertically integrated. Mm -hmm. So when we look at, at AI from a more monetization perspective, what is your take on that? What, what does your experience shows you? What, are, what is the right pathway to monetize AI mm -hmm. services? Mm -hmm. well, so I walked around and uh, spoke with a few startups and okay, they have the right approach, but they have to create a product which is yeah. demanded by market first. Yeah. It's a great thing, but uh, right now, most of them will say, well, about charging the customers, we're doing it manually. We'll figure it out later. Yeah. And okay, yes, obviously you need, to, you need to have a working product. But after that, very soon, you have to figure out mm -hmm. how to charge your customers in an automated way that you spend your time, the time of the founders, yeah. on actually creating something new yeah. and not fixing the invoice. Yeah. But most importantly, if you don't control the profitability of your customers, if you don't yeah. see what's happening with the pricing correctly, yeah. Yeah. a lot of the startups, they will just blow up. Because, well, 
startup which successfully sells many, many customers at $10 per month, but spending $11 worth of API or AI tokens yeah. on every customer, yeah. they cannot sustain uh, for a long time. So this is what we, we want to help them. Mm -hmm. We have a product which did it for telecoms mm -hmm. in fairly more complex environment. Yeah. So now we're creating a lightweight version of our charging and revenue generating product which can connect to the AI agents, which can absorb the data from the backend systems, the cloud storage, basically anything which has a cost associated to a customer, it can absorb it, and then it can help the founders, help the startups to create pricing plans, which will be profitable for them, which will be just right for their customers, so they're not also outpricing themselves yeah. uh, out of the market, yeah. and will allow them to achieve success. But it's more like a chicken and egg story. Where do you start? Because at some point you need to develop a product. Product first, definitely. Product first. Right, but uh, you, you can allow yourself to live uh, in Excel or Google Sheets charging for your first 10 or 20 or maybe 50 customers. But after that, at a certain point, you have to make some changes. And uh, you have to make it fast because if you don't do it just in time, yeah. the amount you're spending on supporting this like outdated manual processes, it will be eaten up all of the time, all of the productive time of founders, of engineers, which can be spent on improving the product. So you would say you need a proper system if you would like to scale up. Exactly. And uh, we had the startup accelerator for telecom product development, we're still thinking about the idea, but we'll try to create yeah. some, some special offer for these AI agent startups to help them, to get them the right system, which will allow them to scale. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a result, they will be on the market, their product will make our lives easier. Mm -hmm. So from an AI perspective, can we say that AI will be a huge accelerator for the telco industry? Yes, definitely. For for every industry. Mm. I think it's very hard to find a way it's not going to help. Yeah. Uh, for telcos also, I think it's going to be that, not the holy grail, but yeah. something they have been looking for. Because I've been talking uh, for many years that okay, telcos, we provide connectivity. That's great, but that's a commodity. Yeah. You have to think what would be that value added thing which you deliver on top of that connectivity. To create so, new revenue streams. Exactly. So now that may be a chance because they have access to the customers mm -hmm. and they can be the channel which yeah. will allow to these agents to be delivered to the end yeah. users and if they do it right, they'll get a revenue share. Mm -hmm. If they do it wrong, if they don't care, if they are too slow, then somebody else will come there and somebody else will be delivering it and they will be just stuck with connectivity where they have no profitability mm -hmm. and who knows what happens happen next. But the AI can also help the operator to evaluate which is probably the right direction mm -hmm. for them to invest or think about any kind of AI integration? It can, but you have to ask it the right questions. You, have, you need to have the right person asking the right questions at the same time. Uh, we have about 200 engineers in our company, uh -huh. and we uh, push an adoption of different AI tools. And I can see there are people who will say, well, I tried it and it didn't work, so it's, it's useless. And yeah. then there are other people in the same team who will say, that's amazing, I did so many things. It's uh, the question of attitude, uh -huh. and the question of, it's a certain skill which you have to acquire how to let AI help you. Mm -hmm. So it also, it, there also needs to be a certain kind of ed, AI education for operators and for the industry as well, to ask the right questions, mm -hmm. understand how mm -hmm. I can use AI. I haven't thought about this yet, but it seems to be like a great idea, because okay. yeah, it's a new skill, yeah. it's a new tool, yeah. and yes, sometimes you just, if you approach it from the wrong side, yeah. you'll say, well, it's, just, it's, yeah. it's useless because yeah. it doesn't work for me, but maybe you were just not using it the, the right way. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Thanks for your time. It was very insightful. Pleasure to meet you. Thank that, you. That was Tech Africa News from MWC 2025. You can find more on techafricanews.com.